Most of Michigan Chaldeans come from the country of Iraq, also known as Mesopotamia. In the United States, the Chaldean community is 100 years old, but it has a vital presence in its homeland of Mesopotamia for more than 7,500 years. Chaldeans are the pioneers of the first human civilization that produced the first urban cities and code of laws with leaders such as King Nebuchadnezzar and King Hammurabi. Chaldeans' ancient capital is Babylon. They are presented the largest metropolitan city in the world during the last Chaldean Babylonian Empire in 600 BC. The Chaldeans speak the Chaldean language that originated from Akkad city in Chaldea region of Iraq. The Chaldeans were converted to Christianity during the very first century of Christianity primarily by St. Thomas the Apostle, uh, going through Mesopotamia with his followers, including Mar Ade and Mar Mari. As with other Christian communities, monastic traditions attracted men and women. Scribes, monks, and priests still guide the Chaldean Church to this day. The European colonial expansion from the 11th to the 15th century connected the Western Christians with the Chaldean Church of the East based in Baghdad and Mosul cities. The Chaldean Church of the East reunited with the Roman Catholic Church in the 15th century after 1,000 years as an independent Christian church. Chaldeans started migrating to Europe and America in the 19th century. Since the Chaldean Church is formally in union with the Roman Catholic Church, Chaldeans have attended Catholic schools, married in Catholic churches, been buried in special section of Catholic cemeteries. Chaldeans also worship with other Eastern Christians who are in union with Rome such as the Maronites and the Syriac Catholics. For a time, Chaldeans in Detroit attended the Maronite Catholic Church. Because ethnic groups have learned to live together in multi-ethnic Iraq, they also have connections with other ethnic communities such as the Jewish community. Well, the church, we didn't have a church at first uh, until my father worked with a lot of people to bring a church here. We to used the to go to the Syrian church, Syrian people. Well, that's where we used to go on Sunday, yeah, but, on but Sunday. we didn't go there. No, we never had the a week. Chaldean we church. We didn't no. have a church. Well, that was like being, instead of having a Chaldean church, you know, that was very similar. Chaldeans eventually joined other waves of immigration to the U.S. about 1910. First, they settled in the city of Detroit, established a small community, started small businesses, and found jobs in the automotive industry. Like many immigrant groups, probably just looking for a better life or a better economic system, at, and for the early immigrants, it was not religious persecution. So I think the original immigrants who came with was really probably economic and just looking for adventure. But in 1965, the immigration laws in the U.S. changed and they eliminated the quota system. And so suddenly, many more Chaldeans began coming to the United States. Recent immigrants gradually brought their entire families, most of them from the famous Chaldean villages near Mosul, but also from Baghdad and Basra. Um, I came to this country as a teenager. My parents, uh, my father was born in, in the capital city of Baghdad, Iraq, and my mother was born in a Chaldean village of Tilkep. Um, I had the privilege in this country uh, to basically go to school, uh, study, go to college, and get it, um, and, and being able to obtain the education of my dream. I, I, I had the opportunity to, uh, to see all the benefits as becoming an American here. And, and a greater opportunity here to become a professional uh, through business and being able to contribute to the American society. 
my mom's side and the majority of my dad's side, uh, that both families were living in, in Detroit area mm -hmm. uh, for so many years uh, prior to us. So it was, I think it was more of a, some kind of like a, a family unification and they tried to join the rest of the, of the bigger family. Every immigrant group faces the challenge of preserving cultural traditions while assimilating to their new country. But as far as being here, when I first got here, we arrived, I remember it, uh, late on a Thursday night, and uh, we went to Uncle Jack's house, and uh, my cousins, Raymond and Richie Nager, Uncle Jack's two sons, could not speak a word of, of, of Surath. Their mother was American, Aunt Dorothy was American, although she could, had learned a few uh, Surath from, and, but the boys could not. So because of the fact that they were going to have a cousin coming here that they couldn't even talk to, they had, they had gotten one of their other Chaldean friends who they went to grade school with to come over and be there as an interpreter for them that, that night. There's definitely a distinct Chaldean identity that was passed down to us you know, within our family, but it was also, it wasn't necessarily assimilation, but it was intertwined with that American identity that sat along in parallel with our Chaldean identity. So, um, and you know, my, myself being the youngest, born in the US, the American boy, um, I, I probably had more of that perspective, maybe more so than my brother and sister. At home, with my parents, it was only Chaldean, mm -hmm. only Surat that was spoken. With my brothers, eventually it was more English as opposed to uh, Surat. And so I started schooling here, uh, walking in, not knowing any English. But eventually, you know, we all learned and acclimated. The immigration of Chaldeans expanded in the late 20th century as the political situation deteriorated in Iraq. But after 1980s, Iraq went through wars between the first war between uh, Iraq and Iran for eight years. And the second war was the Gulf War. And that was bad experience for me and my family because I was a surgeon. And then I have to go to the main hospital in the front line of the battles to do surgeries for the wounded soldiers. So I did a lot of surgeries at that time. I was a neurosurgeon. I got a record of about 5,000 surgeries during that war. Yeah. So between 1980s till 1990s was a bad experience for every Iraqis, I think. Finally, the rise of radical groups in 2014 drove an increased number of Chaldeans to flee from the old country as refugees. Now, much smaller Chaldean ethnic community remain around Iraqi cities such as Mosul and Erbil, along with Baghdad and Basra. Chaldean refugees are settling in the US, Europe, and Australia. Every refugee is an immigrant, but not every immigrant is a refugee. So, uh, you know, the plight of a refugee is a lot different than that of an immigrant. Um, my parents came here as immigrants. Uh, they wanted to leave and wanted to start a new life in America. A refugee was, you know, very comfortable um, in the life that they were leading there and they were forced to flee. And, um, you know, having to be in a country, you know, that takes you in as a refugee Oftentimes you don't really have any rights there. You can't work legally. Um, your children may not be able to go to school. Seniors tend to be isolated at home and they don't have transportation. So this gives them a chance to get out, meet new friends, mm -hmm. and have some fun food. So the clients are referred by our uh, churches, mm -hmm. resettlement programs, um, and then her, uh, word of, um, they hear it from community. Mm -hmm. So yes. they call in here. Um, if they can't come, we do a home assessment. We, yes. I do visit them and see and do the assessment and see what they're in need for. Wars and persecution has escalated migration in recent years, and a number of Chaldeans in Mesopotamia continues to decline. Removed from their homeland, Chaldeans faced great challenges as they tried to maintain their Chaldean language as part of their cultural identity.
it is a source of great pride for Chaldeans that the Chaldean language is related to the language that Jesus spoke. Many Chaldeans pass on the Chaldean language to their children. Many use it in their daily lives. Other Chaldeans are trying to pass it along certain traditions in the Chaldean language such as folk songs and lullabies. Formally, there is an organized and enthusiastic effort to train adults and children in their native Chaldean language. For children, Chaldean language classes are offered at several Catholic schools. For adults, textbooks are written by Chaldean community members, courses at University of Detroit Mercy, and an online program in conversational fluency. One of the things that I, our churches definitely keep the language alive within our churches. Any child that takes First Communion must learn the prayers in Chaldean. Um, I teach catechism at one of our churches, and Chaldean prayers are part of what we teach them. Our First Communion kids know the Mass, both in English and whatever portions that they do teach them in Chaldean, just to keep our language alive, to keep Chaldean part of our Mass. Um, those are taught within our First Communion class, as well as the catechism class. We do teach them certain things. We have another project um, teaching uh, Chaldean to the uh, in Catholic schools. So we have it now in two schools. Uh, for these projects, um, uh, they show us also our identity, whom we are, how from where we came, what was our background, uh, what our uh, old fathers did for, for civilization. Uh, our kids should know that. Uh, plus, our kids also, they have to convert it to their kids and to continue. We hope they will continue from generation to, con to generation. Many of the Chaldean community initially came and lived in Detroit off of Seven Mile and Woodward area and Seven and John R. My parents first were there and the community was there. Later they transitioned to go to Oak Park. My family also moved to Oak Park and from there to Southfield. And it really was a path similar to the to the Jewish community that was here. Uh, they went to Oak Park and they went to Southfield and of course from Southfield the Jewish community went up to Farmington and, and West Bloomfield and the Chaldean community as well. Also the Chaldean community went out to Macomb County and to Sterling Heights and Warren and Shelby. And so you know there is that path that folks took and my parents were, were, were some of them. We lived in Detroit we lived in Oak Park, we lived in Southfield. Later we ended up being in um, Commerce Township and my brother lives in... Uh, this parish actually was the only parish that we had in the east side uh, area, east side Detroit. Um, gradually and slowly, uh, the pastor then, uh, Bishop uh, Jomo, Sarah Jomo, realized that there is a need for more for another church. Suddenly we noticed that there are a lot of people coming to this side of the town, which, which wasn't the norm for, for the first 40 or 50 years. That was not the norm. Most people were living in Southfield area or Detroit or, um, or West Bloomfield area. Um, I think with the flow of refugees, especially after the Iraq war in 2003, this area um, de developed um, uh, very quickly and now I can say that we have probably 60 to 70 percent of our diocese population in this area. Wow. This is built in actually the, the original church. We bought it from St. Anastasia Parish in 1981, but then Bishop uh, Jumbo built the new church in 1996. Um, and after that, he realized that we still need more and more churches. Today, uh, this parish is probably one of the one of the most diverse parishes because you have the younger generations, you have the uh, first generations that came from the country, from the old country. We, we have different different languages that are used, and so uh, there are some challenges because you have it's like you're having a bunch of parishes are put together in some kind of like a. A cluster, big cluster parish, but uh, uh, just like there are challenges, I think they are also add to the richness of the life of the community, where um, uh, we have different groups working together and journeying together um, as one bigger Chaldean community.
فوق الاسوان والعالم علمي A new senior center is being built and plans are underway for high density residential area. Who are we? We're Catholic, we're Iraqi, and we came to this country in search of hope, in search of freedom, because it wasn't always available there. And that's the beauty of our country here in the United States. And we come here with, with the opportunity to continue to assist. We're all very proud of who we are. Mm -hmm. um, and so to maintain that, and I think you can see that with, you know, early on in terms of the community developing through various things, whether it's the Chaldean American Ladies of Charity or other groups that are trying to maintain um, the traditions and the cultures. Um, I think it is important, whether it, it's for us now, but certainly for our uh, either kids or grandkids, you know, for the generations to come so that they do remember um, those traditions if and I hope that this isn't the case but if 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 it does happen where there are no Chaldeans left um, from you know what used to be Chaldea and what what now is modern-day Iraq if there comes a time unfortunately that that no longer exists that we can at least maintain the history so that people know that that our people did exist at, at some point in that area like our gener now with the new generation, the Chaldean generation, our, we have hundreds of doctors, we have hundreds of lawyers, we have hundreds of, uh, of engineers, if I don't say thousands. So we are, we, we are in, the, in the heart of, of the community, of the, of the society. Plus, we have many, many uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, successful uh, businessmen. Uh, if I don't think I would be wrong if I say uh, economy of Michigan is dependent on Chaldeans. Um, in America, you feel you are a human being. Uh, you you are free. Uh, America gave us a lot many things, but we have to also reflect and to give back. So whatever we can do for the, uh, I mean, for uh, progressing of this country to become better and better, we have to do it. America is good for us, so we have to be, we have to be very good for America too. I envision a bright future for the Chaldean American community, and especially here in Michigan. Uh, we have over 175,000 Chaldean Americans living mostly in southeastern Michigan. Many with uh, successful businesses, may, others with advanced education, and they are currently contributing to, the, to, our, to Michigan in different ways. And so we would like to see the younger generation follow pursuit. They follow the way, follow our footsteps and, and go further. How can you positively impact the, our state, impact our community, impact our society? And that's what we'd like to see. Leverage our experiences as Chaldean Americans and then move forward positively in helping everyone in the community. I'm excited to see many of the Chaldean youth enrolled in different universities all over Michigan. Millennials are the future, and we should focus on mentoring children, teaming up with different communities, as well as building our own. Yeah.